Hello everybody, welcome to Builder Buy. Now in this video, we're going to continue on the Odyssey where the first thing we did in the previous videos was to download the Windows Media Creation Tool, number one. Number two, once we have the downloaded that tool, we've created the ISO or the USB installation media so we could get Windows 10 installed. Number three, we have installed Windows 10. Now that Windows 10 is installed on this machine and we have run the Windows 10 updates from Microsoft, we need to now go and install the chipset drivers. After the chipset drivers, we will then download and install the video drivers. We have a Thunderbolt 3 card in this machine, and it's imperative that we get all those drivers installed so everything works, and we'll check Device Manager when we're finished. Now, a couple of other things we might do, because we're going to be doing some stuff on the internet, is to download and install Ninite, Ninite.com, go to their site, download the browsers that we like to use. Once we have our browsers installed, then we'll go pull the other stuff down. Now, we will probably pull down Bella Arc Advisor, let it interrogate the machine, and it'll tell us everything that's going on with the machine. It gives us a motherboard brand model revision, all that kind of information, so we don't have to go hunt for anything. I like to have an inventory of all the machines I work on. So first thing we want to do is download the chipset drivers. So what we need to do is a search. We're going to bring up our browser for AMD X399 chipset drivers. That brings us to this page, Windows 10 64-bit edition. We will download, show in the folder, and once we have the chipset drivers, now we need to install those chipset drivers. After the chipset drivers are installed, and it's a bunch of stuff that's going on, but not everything, then we need to reboot the computer. Once that's installed, then the next step will be to go and download the video card drivers. And the video card drivers just happen to be, if we look at display settings, see, we're looking at a 1024 by 768 resolution. So we've got to get the right chipset drivers installed. And that'll change our resolution to 1080. So we'll bring up our browser, and we'll do a search for AMD, Radeon Pro WX9100. That'll bring us to this site. Now, you need to know what your video card is uh, from the get-go, so when you download your drivers, you're downloading what you need. This is what we need for this machine, and this is what we're using for the example. When we build the Threadripper 3, which is on a TRX-40 motherboard, a um, whole new animal, whole different video card, we'll go through this process again. So we'll go to Drivers and Support, Windows 10, 64-bit edition. We're going to download the Enterprise drivers. Now we have our chipset drivers, which we've installed, and the Radeon Pro drivers, which we're getting ready to install. Now at some point, as we're detecting these drivers, the screen is going to blink while it figures out, changes resolutions, and settles down once it sees the current and correct chipset. Extracting. Now I will take a moment while I'm doing this to state that it's important and imperative we get all these drivers current. Um, have everything functioning before we take the next step, which is whatever applications we need to install. Our video applications, our audio applications and all those specialties. Okay, Radeon Pro, detecting. We're going to click install. It says it'll take a minute and 46 seconds to do that. Screen may flicker, installing AMD display drivers. When it starts flickering, then I'll flip back over to me. And it's interesting, no matter how many times you do this, it's always, you know, a new animal. It's something, uh, screen's flicking now, going out, coming back on. So, yeah, it's coming back, showing a higher resolution. But it's important to do this on a regular basis because sometimes things change, sometimes we forget. But again, this is something we should never take for granted. Just because we've done it, other people need to understand and have the experience to know what's involved. Okay, let's go back over. Okay, now we've got a higher resolution and it wants to restart the computer. So we're going to say OK and it'll restart. Now while Windows is restarting, we'll, uh, we'll wait. Screen went black. When it comes back up, we'll go back over to it. So chipset drivers are installed. Now we'll have the video drivers installed. Now we still have some other special drivers that are, that are specific to this motherboard we need to install. Like this has two network connections on it, but it also has 10 gigabit ethernet. So we're going to need to go to Gigabyte's website and download the drivers for that 10 gigabit ethernet. And Windows is coming back up. Okay, we're back in Windows now. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to go to Control Panel right quick. And I'm going to take a look at Device Manager just to double check and see where we're at. In fact, what I may do first is we're going to do Display Settings, and I'm going to make this a little easier for me to see. I'm going to change this to 150%. Yeah, I like that a whole lot better, so I can see better. Hopefully, y'all can too. There we are. We need to see Device Manager. There's the 10 gigabit Ethernet, the Intel Wireless 9260. So the only thing that we are missing is the 10 gigabit Ethernet. So we're going to go download that driver and we'll get that from Gigabyte. So even though I know what this motherboard brand and model is, I think what I'm going to do now is uh, install Bella Arc Advisor, let it interrogate the machine, 
and it will tell us the model so we can be specific. Then we can go search for that model and pull the drivers down. And I just happen to have Bellarc on a stick. Bellarc has changed the way you do the install routine now. Now you go to their website and, uh, well, you give them your email address, then they send you the link. So since we have Bellarc on a memory stick, we're going to plug that in, get that up and running. Okay, now we're going to take Bellarc Advisor from that USB stick and put it on the hard drive. Windows flag E, so I have it on the hard drive. Now this is an older version, but it should update itself. Agree to the EULA, good old EULA. We'll do the install. Do a security check. Security definitions. Now the newer version of this program, definitions updated. Newer versions of this program put a watermark at an angle across the page. No big deal, I'm just saying. Didn't used to have that, but now we do. So the information is still the same. So Bell Arc Advisor will take only a few minutes to create a profile of this computer. What's amazing about this program, uh, when we found out this at Builder Buy, I was, I was just really blown away by how much information it would tell us. There are programs that cost a lot of money that don't give as much information as Bell Arc Advisor does. It's a great program to use to interrogate a machine. Any machine I ever work on, I always like to have a report from Bell Arc Advisor so that I know, because people always say, Gil, you remember my computer that you worked on, whatever we did? I'm sorry, but I've got a you know, good memory, but it's just a little short especially after being on prednisone. So I have, to, I have to write stuff down. So we're checking the network. And once it's through checking the network, we'll have a complete report of everything. And again, this will tell us the brand, make, model, everything about the motherboard. Uh, I know this is a gigabyte, it's X399. But from there, let's let the report tell us. Okay, we get to pick our browser. So we're gonna go with uh, Chrome, until it annoys me, and then we can switch over to Firefox. And there's our report. Now, what I want to say is while I have the report up, I like to put a shortcut for this so I can refer back to this and I don't have to run it every time I want to see the report. It gets a little convoluted depending on which browser I'm using. All I have to do, copy the URL. Let me show you. I'm going to click up in here. I don't want the file name. I want the directory. Right click, copy. Now I'll press the Windows Start key, E, and where it says Quick Access, because we're now looking at Windows Explorer, I'll click in that, and then I'll press right click, paste, and then press Enter. Okay, that takes me to the directory where that is at. That's the name of that particular computer, desktop, of which eventually, yes, I will rename. I like it something specific to the machine. I will probably rename it like X399 according to what it is so but for now for the purpose of what I'm trying to show you this is so I can do two things one I'm gonna take this I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do send to compressed zip file now with what I've just done I can take that file and I can put it anywhere I want in other words I can send it out as email so if I need to email that to myself as a zip file I can now do that but I will also take a, a copy of the link and put a shortcut on the desktop or else on one of the bars I'm going to create later. We'll do a video on how to do that later. So I'm going to right click and drag and then I will say create a shortcut. And now I have access to that information. I can close that, close that, close all that. But I have access to that report. And what I want to find out, this is the Gigabyte RS Extreme. X399 RS Extreme. So that is what I will rename the computer to. Simple enough. Now, with that information that I'm going to rename the computer to later, because that's the way I want it to be seen on the network. So when the other computers are looking at each other, every computer has a name specific to something that I understand that I know what I'm talking to. So uh, whether it's uh, X399 Oris Extreme, or whether it's a TRX40 Designare, or an X399 Designare, I know which board I'm on. A little tidbit of information. So what we're going to do now is go out and do a search on Google for that particular motherboard. And we're going to go download some drivers. We'll go to support. We need drivers for, and that's interesting, this motherboard has drivers all the way back to Windows 7 32-bit. I can't imagine with a 64-bit processor of this caliber and capability, 32-bit drivers, but there they are. Uh, that's interesting. So Windows 10, 64-bit, the Realtek audio driver, and we need the network driver, LAN, and we want the Aquantia. So we're going to download that driver, bottom left corner, 
Put that under drivers. Now I need to right click, extract, and this will give us the Aquantia network driver. And we want the 64 bit version. So let's see if we can execute that. Good old EULA. Yes, finished. So let's close that down. Let's take a quick look at Device Manager right quick and see how we're doing. We have a base system device. Now that is the driver we're going to pull from the CD, and that is for the, uh, the Thunderbolt 3 card. That's the Gigabyte Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3, and we're going to pull that off the CD now. So we've done our chipset drivers, we've done our video card drivers. This should be the last one. Just happen to have the box, and since that is on a CD, just to be safe, we'll set the computer up so we can pull the driver and get that installed. Again, we don't want to use the most current one because uh, we don't want to brick the card. We don't want to risk it. Driver CD. Glad we got it. I'm glad we have this opportunity to install this driver because uh, Windows is going to choke on this driver. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to go to this PC. We're going to look at the drive. If I right click and say install or open autoplay, this is not going to work, but I'm going to show you how to get around it so we can install the applications on the disk so that it does work. But I'm going to first show you what you're expecting and how your expectations are going to be uh, disappointed. Open autoplay. Okay, we're going to try to run setup.exe. Windows now is not going to let setup.exe run, but I'm going to show you how to get around that. So we're going to say run it. And this app has been blocked for your protection. An administrator has blocked you from running this app. For more information, contact the administrator. And we have nothing else we can click on except close. Now that's extremely annoying, but I'm going to show you now how we're going to install this. Right click, open. We can't run auto run, so we're going to click on Thunderbolt. Well, we have two setup files. One is an application, and one is an installer package. So we're going to try the second one, and voila, we are now in the process of installing the driver off that CD that it wouldn't let us because the default. All this security stuff and uh, you know progress is progress. Got to figure out a way to make things happen. This is what we're doing. So we're going to accept the licensing terms. This is going to get our Thunderbolt 3 installed. So we're going to say yes, go ahead. And it's going to run the A3981.msi file. And this is Intel Client Connectivity Division SW. So we're installing. And this is the Thunderbolt software. Now Thunderbolt can do three things. We're only interested in one of those things. We're not interested in trying to run video through the card. That's just kind of, I think, dumb. We're not interested in running power through the card either. All we're interested in is either connecting with data or connecting with an audio interface. And we're going to do, be doing both of those two things. Okay, software is installed. Let's take a look at this. We'll click on Finish. So we're going to close that down. And again, we're going to go back to Device Manager, Control Panel, Device Manager. And it looks like, it looks to me like we got everything installed correctly. That's pretty slick. But I'm going to double check and we're going to make finish because if we have any errors, we need to know about it now. Now, we're going to be doing some more stuff with Thunderbolt. And I'm just looking real quickly, Storage Controllers. And I'm looking at System Devices and everything with the PCI bus. We have enumeration on everything. Typically what you'll have with Thunderbolt is you'll see some of these upstream or downstream switch ports might have an error, and there are no errors. So with everything being current, and there's the Thunderbolt controller, with all the drivers being current, we should be able to have access to Thunderbolt. We're going to see. One other place we want to check be down in the bottom right-hand corner in the system tray. So I'm going to go over here to the system tray. There it is. System tray, Thunderbolt software. I can right click and I can take a look at view attached devices. Of course, we don't have anything connected right now. We're just getting all the drivers in. That's the first step. We're going we're gonna to do some more stuff with Thunderbolt later. Again, the purpose of this video is to get all the drivers current. We've downloaded the Windows Media Creation Tool. We've uh, created the Windows Install Media onto the USB stick. And now we've done the drivers. Chipset drivers, video card drivers, and the Thunderbolt 3 drivers for the Titan Ridge Thunderbolt 3. And now we're taking a look to make sure the application that was installed from the CD, everything's correct. So we can view attached devices, for which there are none. Approve attached devices. Thunderbolt networking, those two are grayed out right now. 
manage approved devices, settings, about, and exit. So the settings, and this will tell us, Thunderbolt settings, Thunderbolt networking, allow Thunderbolt network connections without user approval, create a desktop icon for a Thunderbolt networking connection to an adjacent PC, notifications. So that's good. Go back down here to the bottom, click on it again, right click, manage approved devices, of which there are none, show devices and show computers. Now I'm going to click on right click, about, and this part's really, really important. We're looking at the Thunderbolt software version, the application version, the service version, the controller driver version. Now the networking driver version unknown because there's nothing attached. We see the Thunderbolt controller, Thunderbolt 3, 15 EB, two ports, security level, user authorization SL1, the non-volatile memory firmware version 23.00, and external GPU supported, yes. We're just checking drivers, making sure everything is all hunky-dory. And it is so far. So now that we're up and running, we can start working on putting this machine into service. So this was, again, about getting all the drivers installed, and I hope you found this useful. And that little tidbit, well, that's a shadow of things to come, because when we build the TRX-40, we're going to be doing some more stuff with Thunderbolt 3. Of all the motherboards that are TRX-40, there's only one that has a Thunderbolt 3 card, and that also that same motherboard has an NVMe quad card that's PCI Express version 4. So shadow of things to come. Hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank you for watching this, and I think we're probably done with this for now. So we'll look forward to seeing you next video, and uh, please stay tuned. We got we got more cool stuff going on. We got a we got an ocean of NVMe cards we got to wade through, and uh, we got some more laptops upgrades. So thanks for joining us. My name is Gil Boyd, and we'll look forward to seeing you next video. Y'all have a great day. Y'all are amazing.